the notions of God's kingdom on earth as in heaven and our obligation to work for that kingdom are central points of today's liturgy. Of course, the Feast of Christ the King always occurs in November, coming as it does at the end of the church's year. November, too, begins with our celebration of all saints and our commemoration of the faithful departed. In a way, the opening of the cause of the servant of God for the Willie Doyle touches upon all these elements. Father Doyle was certainly conscious of the need for everyone, the baptized, the professed, and the ordained, to work for the kingdom of God. Indeed, during his novitiate in this diocese, he signed an oath offering his life, as Father John has mentioned. His less known quality as a spiritual director saw him encourage many towards priesthood and religious life. Indeed, by way of example, he was instrumental in getting Sister Maria Dwyer, a Cork woman and daughter of a local businessman, to return from Belgium and establish a Port Clare monastery there, a monastery that is still going well, thank God. The heroic desire of Doyle to serve and promote God's kingdom found ultimate expression on the battlefield when he was ministering to soldiers, some of whom were Catholic, others Anglican. After bringing one to safety, he returned to the line of fire and was killed ministering to others, as Father John has just said. Pope Francis often talks of the church as being a field hospital. It is an image that is entirely appropriate here. Indeed, we are told that Doyle was nominated for the Victoria Cross for bravery, but it was not granted due to he being, as an article in the Irish Times put it a few weeks ago, suffering from the three disadvantages of being Catholic, a priest, and dare I say it in present company, a Jesuit. Since his death in 2017, his, sorry, 1917, his cult, or following, has remained strong and indeed widespread. Since announcing today's ceremony a, one, a month ago, I have been struck by the extent of that cult. Doyle's name comes up in the most unexpected of places. Indeed, my favorite story of him is contained in Alfred O'Rahilly's biography of him, of him, written almost 100 years ago. After Doyle's death, his father's house was being burgled, and Doyle's father was powerless to stop it. The burglar came across a photograph of Father Doyle on the dresser and asked who it was. Doyle's father said that it was his son who lost his life as an army chaplain. The burglar responded that he knew him. He was a soldier, and Doyle was his chaplain, he said. He said that Doyle was a good man, dropped his bag of stolen property, and walked out empty-handed. Perhaps a case of Doyle's first miracle. <laughs> Indeed, a recent article in the tablet by Melanie McDonough quotes the journalist Sir Philip Gibbs, who described Doyle speeding all day, hither and thither, over the battlefield like an angel of mercy. His words of absolution were the last word heard on earth by many an Irish lad that day, and the stooping figure of a priest and father filled the glance of many in their agony. Another tribute to him came from a member of the Orange Order, who said that, quote, we could not possibly agree with his religious opinions, but we simply worshipped him for other things. He did not know the meaning of fear. He was as ready to risk his life, to take a drop of water to a wounded Ulster man, as to assist men of his own faith and regiment. Gibbs interestingly called him a martyr for charity. Patrick Kenny's more recent book, To Raise the Fallen, provides further account, scholarship, and indeed inspiration. It is, I think, remarkable that so much has been written over the years, and the demand for such is still strong today. Doyle has something to say to our time. When bridge builders are scarce, nationality, creed, and political belief to him were secondary and subservient to being a child of God. Indeed, one can see so many of the themes of Pope Francis' papacy in Doyle's life, charity, generosity, bridge building, and brotherhood, fratelli tutti. 
On the 1st of November, we celebrated the Feast of All Saints, a celebration of those whose statues and pictures adorn our churches and homes. But that feast also commemorates the more Pauline interpretation of sainthood, those who led good and holy lives and are now with God in heaven. We have known those Pauline saints. They handed on the faith to ourselves. They worshipped here and in every church. They suffered, they offered, they inspired, they prayed, and they loved. There can be no doubt that Doyle is one of those Pauline saints. It is inconceivable that the God of love and Father of all mercies would not be moved by his heroism to those who suffered and his determination to bring absolution and comfort to those who were dying in muddy and bloodied battlefields. The canonized saints are somewhat different. Their cause has been tried and tested by the church and miracles have been attested to. This evening, we begin the cause for canonization of Father Willie Doyle. We cannot but be moved at his story. We are inspired by his faith. We are encouraged by his generosity and witness, and we pray that he will soon be counted among those whom we publicly venerate and implore. Whether it will be successful or not, well, we cannot know. We can only hope. In the meantime, Doyle's charity, generosity, and evangelical zeal have something to offer ourselves. His regard, compassion, sacrifice, and witness to all who are suffering, regardless of nationality or creed, is still, unfortunately, a lesson needed for our time. We pray that one day we shall count him among the canonized saints and enjoy his intercession on our behalf.